everybody, welcome back. Welcome to our apiary. This is where we keep our bees in our beehive. If any of you are interested in keeping bees in Colorado Springs, you are allowed one hive inside the city. I highly recommend that you take a bee course if you're interested in keeping bees. Um, they can be a little tricky. There is a bee course offered by the Pikes Peak Beekeepers Association, and there are other courses in the area as well. So we keep our bees in a Langstrup hive, which is a traditional commercial hive body. We keep them um, in the deep supers year round, and then we add the honey supers in the spring, and we pull these in the fall. There are other types of hive bodies. There are um, the Kenyan top bar hives, which you'll notice are the sort of horizontal, and they have just the frame that you pull. And there are also waray hive bodies. Warays look like a Langstrup. They're smaller, and they run vertical, and they are a top bar hive. You can also run frames on a waray. They call that a modified waray. The most important thing about keeping bees is the beekeeper and what choices the beekeeper makes. So for instance, even though we run a commercial hive with frames, we don't use any antibiotics, we don't use any pesticides, uh, we're very careful with the bees, very hands off. We do offer them supplemental feeding um, with this Boardman feeder. The uh, bees will only eat supplemental food if they're hungry. So if they're out of food in the wild and this is out for them, then they will eat from that feeder. But if there is wild food available, they won't mess with this food that we provide them. We feed them reconstituted organic evaporated cane juice, which is um, very high quality for bee food. Uh, most of the folks that run hive bodies like this, um, the commercial operations that have thousands of hives actually run high fructose corn syrup. We all know how fabulous that stuff is. So um, we give them a very high quality food. In the spring, early in the year, when they're starting to ramp up their numbers for the harvest, we also feed them pollen patties. Pollen is their source of protein. So we make sure that they have plenty of protein in the hive um, so that when their numbers are coming up, they're well fed and well taken care of. So we'll put these on in the spring, we'll feed them if they need, and we sort of turn them loose for the summer. And they are quite active. All of our neighbors stop by and let us know, oh, we saw your bees today, they were on such and such, or they were collecting pollen from this plant. Um, and we watch them bring it in. They bring in pollen all summer, all different colors, white, orange, red, yellow, uh, really pretty. They pack it on their back legs. They fly in with their little saddle bags, is what they call it. So our hive actually swarmed this spring. It swarmed twice in a week, which was quite dramatic. Uh, it's natural for honeybees to swarm after the queen has sort of outlived her usefulness, the worker bees will stage a coup and um, grow a new queen to take over the hive, and that's exactly what happened. We actually had two queens hatch out, so um, one swarm left on a Tuesday and the next swarm left on a Thursday. With with the bees swarming, we weren't sure that we were going to get much honey. Um, we think we're going to get maybe 40 pounds of honey this year. Uh, we've been sort of peeking in the supers to see what's in here, um, and it looks pretty good. Considering that our hive swarmed twice, we think it's actually excellent, so we're pretty pleased with that. So we'll pull these in the fall and harvest the honey out. We'll put them into an extractor and we'll spin the honey out of the frames, and then we'll put these away for the winter. Once the fall harvest is over and we pull these two off, we'll go in and we'll actually winterize the hive. We'll wrap it with um, some dense foam and some tar paper. The tar paper is black, so it absorbs heat and keeps the hive a little bit warmer. That dense foam acts as an insulation. We'll also vent the top of the hive so that no condensation will drip back down on the bees. As the bees are clustered up, they actually put off a little bit of heat and they actually produce a little bit of moisture. That condensation can hit the top and drip back down on them. If it does, the wet bees will die. They can't, they can take the cold, they cannot take the cold and the wet. So we'll vent the top um, with a little bit of an angle so if there is water it runs to the back and doesn't come back down on them and then we wait until spring and we start the process all over again. So I just wanted to open up the hive here for a minute um, just to kind of show you how gentle these bees are. Uh, folks are generally pretty afraid of stinging insects and honeybees, they don't really want anything to do with you. They have other things to take care of. Um, so I can just pull the uh, top right off, no problem. 
Um, I can take this off if I want. I'm going to leave it on because it's a little bit cold today. But you can see them down here. I can put my finger out. They'll crawl right on it. Um, we can reach down and pull frames barehanded. The bees will kind of crawl up our arms and fly away. They don't have a lot of interest in you unless you're a flower. So if you're a threat and you move quickly or you're dressed in dark colors, the guard bees will kind of check you out. Um, but other than that, unless you've got nectar for them, they're just going to leave you alone. If you want more information on honeybees, I would highly suggest that you go out to the web and take a look around, find a local beekeepers association and see about taking a class, and definitely check out our site, www.righttothrive.org. Ask any questions, check out our blog posts, and we'll see if we can help you. Thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.